In our last video, I hope that you got a sense about what a confidence interval actually is. So now we're going to look at constructing confidence intervals where we know the sigma, which is the population standard deviation, and we're trying to estimate the population mean. So if we think about the information we learned in our last video, we said in the middle of our interval is our point estimate. And then we're going to go to the right and to the left, our margin of error. And that's all we're going to be doing here is we're going to the left and to the right, our margin of error from our point estimate. So as we work through estimating population means where sigma is known or sigma is unknown or estimating population proportions, the only difference is going to be how do I determine my point estimate and how do I determine my margin of error? So that's really the only difference as well as what are the restrictions. So in order to use the central limit theorem for population means for this specific interval, we need to know that a simple random sample was used, which means every subject or every sample had an equal chance of being chosen. In this case, because sigma is known, we need to know sigma and either the sample size is at least 30 or the population distribution is approximately normal. And if you recall from when we learned in our last chapter, when n was equal to 30, that sampling mean was very normal. And that's why that's that threshold. So now that we know basically what the restrictions are, we need to learn how to calculate the margin of error ourselves. But first, I just want to go through a little bit of background and notation. The level of confidence, which is C, corresponds to the area under the normal curve centered at the population mean. So if I think about my normal curve, I'm horrible at drawing a normal curve, but you get the idea. Right here in the middle is going to be X bar. Now, if I want a 95% level of confidence, essentially what I'm saying is I want from here to here, all this area in between to be 95% of the whole or 0.95. Now that's great. And most people understand that, but here's where the math comes in and it's not difficult math. So try to stick with me for a minute. If 95% is what I have shaded in white and I've got some stuff over here and some stuff over here, now we have to talk about the math involved in what those areas are. Well, we know the whole thing is equal to one. So if I take one minus 0.95, I get 0.05. So 100% minus 95% is 5%, which means the total area that I've shaded green on the tails is 5%. But both of those sides are equal. So if I take 0.05 and divide it by two, I get 0.025 that's how much area is in each of these tails. So we're not quite done with math yet. And here's why. So what this is saying is we call this Z of negative alpha over two. So this is Z of 0 0.025. And that's a negative value. And then of course, we're going to have the positive value and this one's the important one to be able to figure out. And now while it's still denoted Z alpha over two, really what I'm going to be looking at is if this area to the right is 0 0.025, what's the area to the left? Well, the area to the left of this is 95% plus 2.5%. So this guy is actually 0.975. Now, once you get this down, you're good to go because that's really the hardest math that you're going to be doing, I promise. I know that I always say that statistics is the least mathy math class. This is the math that you're going to have to do. So let me go through that again. Again, if we have 95% in the middle, that leaves 5% in the tails, half in each tail. So half of 5% is 2.5%. So that's where we got this 0.25. And then if I want to find how much area is to the left of this, then I'm going to add 
0.95 and 0.025, or just subtract this guy from 1. And this is the value that I'm going to use when I'm using a table or using Excel. So what we just found is that we said we have C, we understand C. Well, alpha is the total area in the tail. So remember on my last picture, I said 0 0.95 and I subtracted to get 0 0.05. That means alpha is 0 0.05. And so alpha over two equals the area in one tail. So that's where we found 0 0.025. So that's basically explaining everything we talked about on the last slide. Now, what we didn't talk about is when we look at that curve, whatever my z-score is, so yes, we're going to bring back the z-scores, whatever my z-score is, say this was 2.6, which it's not, but you get the idea, then this guy would be negative 2.6. If this guy was uh, 1.7, this guy would be negative 1.7. So you get the idea that they're going to be the exact same z-score, but with the opposite sign. So now let's talk about how to calculate the margin of error. And again, don't let this craziness of notation fool you. We already know how to do this. This is going to be our critical value based on alpha over two, which we haven't found yet. So if you're like, I have no idea what she's talking about, that's okay. We haven't done this yet. So we're going to find our critical value. And then hopefully you recall this, this is just the standard deviation of our population divided by the square root of n, which we already talked about last week with the central limit theorem. So let's go through a full example together. And in this example, we're going to go through every single step. And I didn't cover anything up, so we're just gonna talk about it as we go. So in order to estimate the number of calls to expect at a new suicide hotline, volunteers collect a random sample. So this is going to be key because that's going to help us know um, that the conditions are met of 35 similar hotlines across the nation to find a sample mean of 42 calls per month. So sample mean is X bar, 42 calls per month. Construct a 95% confidence interval Okay, so let's pick a new color. This is going to be C. For the mean number of calls per month, assume that the population standard deviation is known to be 6.5 calls per month. That guy is sigma. Remember we said sigma is known. So sigma in this case, I should use a color because it's hard to stand out there. 6.5 calls per month. So let's check conditions. First of all, is it a simple random sample? Yes, I underlined that in yellow. Is the population standard deviation known? It is, they told us right here. And is the sample size at least 30? Uh, and yes, it is. N is 35. So check, uh, step one, check, check, we're okay. Step two, find the point estimate X bar. And again, we've already sort of highlighted that to be 42 calls per month because that's the sample mean. Now we're going to find all of the other values that we need to actually compute our um, confidence interval. So N is pretty straightforward. We already talked about that being 35. Sigma, we already talked about that being 6.5. Now the Z is the most difficult part. So I want you to think again at our picture. And if in the middle is 95%, then in the tails is 5% total. So this is 2.5% and this is 2.5%. So what I'm going to do is in Excel, I'm going to use the fact that this is 0 0.975 and that's what I'm going to use in Excel to say there's 97.5% to the left of that value. So in Excel, what I'm going to do, and you can use a normal distribution table or you can use your calculator, but I'm only going to focus on Excel. So I'm going to use norm.inverse of 0 0.975 and comma one, which is true. And that's going to give me the 1.96. And we're going to do this together. So if that doesn't make sense yet, just give me a moment and we'll do it together. 
Now we're going to put all of this together in the margin of error. The margin of error is found by taking the critical value, that's the 1.96 that I sort of told you how to find, but we haven't done it in Excel yet. And we're going to uh, multiply it by sigma divided by the square root of n. So sigma being 6.5, n being 35. So notice here, I'm just plugging in 1.96 times 6.5 divided by, this should say the square root of 35. Sorry, I forgot to replace n with 35. And do me a favor and do all of that math in your calculator or in Excel together. So I have a lot of students who make an error because they'll try to take 6.5 divided by the square root of 35 and then they round that value and then they take that rounded value times 1.96 and their overall value is close but not quite right so don't do any what we call intermediate rounding so just go straight to the solution and that is 2.153 etc now just to remind you what we're doing remember we had a point estimate and then we said add e to the right, subtract e to the left, and that's going to give me the endpoints of my interval. So my point estimate was the 42, so that guy is here, 42 in the middle, and this, what we just calculated, said I'm going to add 2.15 to the right, and I'm going to subtract 2.15 to the left. And when I do that, these are my two endpoints. This guy is 39.8, and this guy is 44.2. Now, we should always write our interval in mathematical notation. And again, that just means the parentheses with a comma in between. One key thing here is it always goes from least to greatest. So this is a correct interval, but if I said 44.2 comma 39.8, that would be an incorrect interval. It has to go from least to greatest. And then we want to interpret what it means. We are 95% confident that the true population mean for the number of calls to suicide hotlines across the nation is between 39.8 and 44.2 calls per month. Again, we're talking about our confidence in capturing the true population mean. So we're saying the true population mean is likely between 39.8 and 44.2 calls per month. I want to talk to you now about how to use Excel. And if you'll notice, I have two different columns set up. They're both for section 8.1. One of them includes critical value and standard error, and the other one just goes straight to margin of error. So we're gonna talk about how I set both of these up. If you'll notice, both have sample mean, population standard deviation, sample size, and confidence level as inputs, because those are all of the things that we need. For the critical value, and again, you need to know how to do this. So even though it's easier just to find the solution in the right-hand column, you need to know how to find critical value because I'm going to be asking you for that when you do your projects, because it's important to understand. So if you'll notice what I've set up is norm.s.inverse. And I think when I said previously, I said you do the probability comma one, uh, you don't need the comma one. So really you just need the probability. So what I've done is I've set it up to take B5, which is my confidence level. So in this first example, it was 0.95. So what it's going to do is it's going to take the 0.95, and then it's going to take one minus 0.95, and take whatever's left over divided by two. So essentially it's calculating 0.975. So if you'll recall, that's what we used. So it'd be the same as if I said norm S inverse 0.975, but this way I don't have to actually do the math, I just have to set it up correctly the first time and that will give me the answer. Now the standard error, if you'll recall, is the population standard deviation, which is sigma, divided by the sample size. So as I put these in here, uh, 35 hotline, oops, 35 hotlines, and mean was 42, and the population standard deviation was 6.5. So if you'll notice, the standard error is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. And then if I multiply those two together, I get the margin of error. So that's B7 times B8. Now, just as before, I'm going to take my sample mean, which is my point estimate. 
I'm going to subtract B9, which is the margin of error, and then I'm going to take the sample mean and add B9. So that's the um, confidence level is 39.8 to 44.2, which is the same thing that we found by hand. Now, I can also do the same thing here, 42, 6.5, 35, oops, 35, and 0.95. And if you'll notice, I get the margin of error right away without having done anything. This is using confidence.norm. And for confidence.norm, we're going to take one minus the confidence level. So essentially, it's saying put in alpha. So if you remember, alpha was one minus C, and C is 0.95. So you're putting in alpha, and then the standard deviation, which is 6.5, and then the sample size, 35, so that they can calculate um, the standard error for you is essentially what they do. So they found the margin of error. I still have to do this part where I subtract and add, um, but again, that gives me everything that I need for my confidence interval. However, I still need to be smart enough to know what it means. So uh, Excel is just going to do the math for you. So now we're just gonna do a couple of questions together. And if you'll notice, they're going to go really fast because all I'm going to do is I'm going to have to recognize what's the sample mean, what's the standard deviation, what's the sample size, and what's the confidence level. So in this case, we have a toy company who wants to know the mean number of new toys per child bought each year. Marketing strategists at the toy company collect data from the parents of uh, 1,842 randomly selected children. So first of all, N is greater than 30, and this is randomly selected. So we should be good to go for the central limit theorem. Um, 842 is going to be our sample size. So I'm just going to fill it in as we read. The sample mean is found to be 4.7 toys per child. So I'm going to enter 4.7 as our sample mean. Uh, construct a 90% confidence interval. So 0.9, we don't use 90, we use 0.9. Assume the population standard deviation is known to be 1.9. And notice I didn't have to do any work. Excel did all of the work for me. So all of my work really at the beginning was setting up my Excel spreadsheet correctly. Um, and then I get my interval. So remember, when we talk about the interval, we're saying we are 90% confident that the true mean number of new toys, toys per child bought each year is between 4.63 and 4.77 toys. This one is for you to try on your own. So just as a quick reminder, don't just find the interval, but make sure you understand what the interval means as well. When you have done the question, press play to see how you did. So we're dealing with a local company that produces hand-knitted socks, and they want to know for women in their area, the average length of a woman's foot from toe to heel, which makes sense. They need to know how big to make their socks. They collect data from 431 randomly selected women. So N is greater than 30. They are randomly selected. So central limit theorem can be used. We've checked conditions. 431 is our sample size. So 431. We are looking at a sample mean of 8.72 inches. And we're looking at a 95% confidence interval, so 0.95 and assume the owners know that the population standard deviation is 0.36 inches. So again, once I do that, if I have Excel set up correctly, I don't have to do any work. It's just going to find the solution for me. Now, the answer, again, we have to know how to interpret the solution. So our interpretation of the solution is that we are 95% confident that the true mean length of a woman's foot in the company's area is between 8.69 inches and 8.75 inches. Coming up next, we are going to take a look at that margin of error formula and talk about different calculations that we can do in order to say, find the sample size or to find the sample mean.